Well, hello again, William Chambers here. Uh, today I thought I'd take you inside the Brock uh, grain dryer and show you how they actually work. Most of my viewers probably know, but there'll be some that don't. Um, so I'll start off in the uh, hot chamber here. This is uh, in these columns here. That's where your corn is. These are about eight inches, well, 10 inches to a foot thick. And uh, your corn goes in the dryer at the top here. There's an auger in the top that carries it along and fills each one of these columns. And then it starts its way down here. And then underneath the floor here is your actual cold chamber. And I'll take you down there in a minute. So this is where the drying process starts. So in this hot heat chamber, we have the temperature set at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. We dry it pretty slow because we want to keep our bushel weight up. And inside there, that's your burner. All those, there's flame on each one of those rows there and up and down here. So I'll take you down in the cold chamber. Now, up here the fan forces the air through this way, through the corn and outside and wherever it goes. But down here in the cold chamber, it actually works as a heat exchanger. It actually sucks the cold air from outside through here, back into the fan and then comes back out here. So it's used recycling the hot air, which is actually pretty neat. So I was just in here cleaning the screenings out. This gets full of red dog and uh, screenings because it's sucking it all out of the columns as the corn goes by. So underneath these trap doors, this is where your, your conveyor chain, and that moves ever so slow, and it just takes a little bit out of each column as it goes along, and then the corn just keeps flowing out and puts it down through these holes, just like a just like a wedge there, <coughs> drops it down, and then it carries it out the end. And inside here, there's all kinds of sensor. There's a moisture sensor and a heat sensor, and it's pretty high tech. It may not, it may not look like it. It's supposed to be one of the more efficient dryers, but we're pretty happy with it. Shut these doors so I don't forget. Make an awful mess if you forget to shut one of these doors. So every once in a while I gotta crawl down in there and check to make sure all these columns are flowing because what happens is if they start flowing or they don't flow fast enough you'll get burnt kernels in the corn and you don't want that. You also don't want to have a dryer fire. There's been a lot of that going on this year. So this is actually a superb SQ series dryer. Frankfort, Frankfort, Indiana. If any of my viewers are from Indiana. This is a 24 foot dryer grab on here so I don't fall off okay once it gets running I scrape all that red dog and garbage off of there that dark stuff is actually the toxins that are coming out of the corn and it's been a real issue with some varieties this year so yeah inside here is your your fan like I say, it sucks the cold air from the bottom and blows it out the top. And we have two different ways of filling this dryer. We have a drag conveyor. Well, we have this pipe out of the silo. Once the silo gets over half full, we can feed it at the top there. And usually it'll keep it running overnight. Fortunately, the overhead bin we can only dry out of it for six hours 
the conveyor that goes across there. Just clicks on and off whenever it needs corn. Just take you down and show you what, where it goes from here. Hard to walk down a ladder with the one hand. So here we have a Walinga grain cleaner. And because the toxins are so high this year, we got to keep it cleaned out. So all the fines that pass through this auger, they fall down inside there and then it sucks it out here and over into the old jiffy dump. Now if we have trouble with this thing, we also have a bypass where we can drop it right down into the drag and carry it away. We have had to do that. We've burnt the belts off here one time. Because with all the freezing and thaw and everything gets froze up and belts start slipping and havoc and you all know what I'm talking about. So from there it goes up to this drag, up the elevator leg which is 125 feet tall. We have a 90 by 30 here, 16 by 70 here, and then we have a 30 by 30 by 80, yeah, 30 by 80 over there. <coughs> and this drag is solely for wet corn, so we don't have any calamities of wet corn getting mixed with dry corn. Pretty slick setup. And this is our wet corn storage right now, but once we get near the end, we got to empty it right out and start putting dry corn in because we don't have a, enough storage in our dry silos. And then we'll haul a bunch home to the harvest store for feed. So yeah, that's kind of our drying setup here on the 23rd of December, so... If I don't get around to making another video, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see what next year brings. Thanks for watching.